Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and in this one we are going to take a look on all the different components of the RBMK reactor and how these components interact with each other as it is pretty important to understand this because the RBMK reactor has no size limits. You can make it as big as you want to. So it is imperative that you understand how the different components are going to interact with each other. Also, we are going to take a look on how to modify the reactor that I made in my previous video into something that will never explode using automatic control rods. So without any further ado guys, let's get straight into this video. So the very first thing that we need to understand is nuclear fission as that process is used to convert water into steam which then gives us power. So the way nuclear fission works is pretty simple. You bombard a heavy nucleus like uranium or plutonium which is radioactive with a neutron and that neutron basically splits the nucleus into two parts and makes it into two different elements. Now this process also releases three other neutrons and also a tremendous amount of heat. Now the neutrons that have been released in this process, they go ahead and they basically split other uranium or plutonium atoms and this chain keeps on continuing growing and growing until you have an uncontrollable reaction on your hand. Now this process is used to make nuclear bombs. So yeah, that is how fission bombs work. So now that you have understood how nuclear fission works, let's go ahead and take a look on all the different components. Okay. So the very first component that we are going to take a look at is the fuel rods. Now the fuel rod is where you are going to place your radioactive uranium or plutonium. And once you place the fuel rod inside, it is going to basically shoot neutrons in all the four directions. Here, here, this side, and finally this side. And these neutrons are going to split other fuel rods which you will place adjacent to it. Now, as we saw in the diagram, if we don't control the amount of neutrons, the reaction is going to be uncontrollable. We don't want that. So then we come to control rods. Control rods basically stop neutrons from going from one side to the other side. And here, as you can see, we have two control rods. And the amount of control rods which you put in basically means how many neutrons can pass from one side to the other side. Now let's come to the graphite moderators. Graphite moderators are used to slow the neutrons down. So when a neutron passes through the moderator, it slows down. Then we have the RBMK steam channel, which is used to convert water into steam. So the heat that is produced by nuclear fission, it is going to be converted into steam inside this RBMK boiler. Also, we have the neutron reflectors, which is used to reflect the neutrons back from where it came from. And then we have the neutron absorbers which is completely used to absorb neutrons and yeah it won't let it pass it won't reflect it finally we have the structural column which is simply used to transfer heat so now that we have taken a look at the different components let's make a simple rbmk reactor using the knowledge that we have so first of all place down a fuel rod and inside the fuel rod we are going to place medium and rich uranium, which as you can see, splits with slow neutrons and it splits into fast neutrons. But after placing it, nothing happened. Well, that is because this fuel rod is not self-igniting. There are two types of fuel rod, the one which is self-igniting and the other which is not self-igniting. Now the self-igniting fuel rod can basically react with its own self. So once I place this self-igniting fuel rod, as you can see, its temperature has started increasing. The skin temperature, the core temperature, the xenon poisoning, everything has started increasing. So the self-igniting fuel rod can basically interact with itself. And this is used to kickstart our RBMK reactor. Now, in order to control all the neutrons that this fuel rod will throw away, let's place down some fuel rods. So we have placed down four fuel rods in all the direction where the neutrons are gonna go but we need slow neutrons in order to split the fuel, right? So how do we convert it into slow neutrons? By placing down moderators. So place down four moderators like this, and any neutron that passes through these moderators is gonna slow down. Now place down four fuel rods in front of these moderators so that the neutron which is coming from the central fuel rod will slow down and it will split the fuel that we place in these fuel rods. So in the outermost fuel rods, we are going to place fuel which is not self-igniting. So one, two, 
three and finally the fourth one and remember this fuel is not self igniting now in the center most fuel rod we are going to place fuel which is self igniting and with this the reaction should start theoretically but it hasn't why is that because we have not pulled out the control rods the control rods are 100% in and that is why they are stopping 100% of the neutrons which this fuel rod is throwing so let's pull out all the fuel rods or sorry all the control rods but at a different way so one fuel rod will be 50% out the other fuel rod will be 25% out the third fuel rod will be 75% and the fourth one will be 100% now what does it mean when we pull out a control rod by 50% it means that the control rod will only allow 50% of the neutrons to pass to the other side the other 50% will be absorbed by the control rod so now that we have pulled out our control rods by different percentage let us place the self igniting fuel in the middle section here and now if we take a look on all the fuel there the reaction has started but the rate of reaction is different as you can see now why is that that is because we have pulled out the control rods in different percentage the more control rod you pull out the faster the reaction rate is going to be pretty simple right and yeah if you run your reactor on low temperatures it is going to result in xenon poisoning so be a bit cautious about that now what do we do with all this heat that we are producing because yeah we need somewhere in order to dump this heat because if we don't do that our reactor is going to explode well that is where our power production comes in we are going to place down steam uh, steam channels so yeah place down four steam channels in corners like this and then we are going to provide these steam channels with infinite amount of water but before that cover these steam channels with rbm the structural columns as structural columns are used to conduct heat and retain heat so yeah cover them like this and once you do that it's now time to get some water into these steam channels now this is just for example what i'm showing you here but yeah first of all pull out every control rod by 100% so that we can have maximum reactivity and then connect water ducts on all of these steam channels this is not the correct way to do it once again i'm telling you that this is just to show you guys how the reaction works so now that we have connected water pipes let us get in some infinite water supply and once we have infinite amount of water supply let's check that by clicking here so each and every one of our steam channels now has water right so if we start the reaction this water should be converted into steam as soon as the temperature reaches 100 degrees celsius so let's check what is the status of our steam channels and as you can see the skin temperature is already about 200 degrees celsius so our water should be converted into steam and there finally we have steam so this is how a simple rbmk reactor works by converting water into steam now let's make something that will be used to annoy your friends place down one fuel rod and cover it with neutron reflectors now what will happen is when you place fuel in this fuel rod and the fuel rod it will be self igniting the neutrons will be reflected back at itself and that will result in a cataclysmic reaction just see the rate of temperature rise the temperature is rising at an alarming rate here and as soon as it reaches nearly 1500 to 1600 degrees celsius the reactor is gonna blow enjoy Oh, look at how cool that looks and now there will be radiation everywhere so i won't recommend doing this but this was just to show you guys what happens when your reactor overheats so don't let your reactor overheat so now that we have seen how the components of the rbmk reactor works let's see how to modify the reactor that i made in my previous videos so that you can basically make it blast proof so it doesn't explode anytime so the very first change that I have made is 
using fuel rods which are not self ignited so on all the outer fuel rods the fuel rods which are not in the center use the fuel which is not self ignited this is the very first step to make sure that your reactor doesn't explode and as you can see place them down in all the fuel section except for the middle fuel rod the middle fuel rod is going to be self ignited but aside from that every rod is going to be not self ignited so the other major change that i have made in this reactor is by replacing the manual control rods with automatic control rods for the central fuel rod now when you take a look at the interface of the automatic control rod it is very different from the normal control rods right so let's place down a normal control rod for a second now as you can see the percentage here shows the amount of percentage the control rod is out but there is no such control for the automatic control rod rather it is dependent on heat and temperature the heat and temperature of the central fuel rod so let's set the automatic control rod up so first of all we have the minimum heat or the minimum temperature at which the control rod should start coming in so we are going to set it to 400 degrees celsius now the maximum temperature well we don't want a temperature to exceed 900 let's say so we are going to input 900 now what should be the level of control rod what amount of control rod should be out at minimum heat so i will say 100 percent so at 400 degrees celsius 100 percent of the control rods will be out so let's type 100 here and finally what should be the amount of control rods that is out at maximum heat so i will say 50 percent so at 400 degrees celsius 100 percent of the control rods will be out now we have three different modes here but to understand this on the y-axis you have the amount of control rods which are out and on the x-axis we have the temperature so for now we are just gonna ignore the three modes and we are gonna go with linear interpolation and yeah we will discuss the other kind of interpolations in a future video now as soon as i hit save you can see the control rods are coming out because the temperature right now is less than 400 degrees celsius so now let's do the same for all the other control rods in order to set them up and then we are going to start our reaction and see what happens once our fuel rod reaches 400 degrees celsius and yeah don't forget to save this by the way because if you don't save it your reactor is not gonna work now once i have set up all four of my control rods wait for it to come out and then we are gonna pull out all the other control rods as well using our panel nearly done and the control rod is 100 percent out so now let's pull out all the other control rods using our panel let's type 100 and save and this will pull out all the other control rods and now our reactor is ready for its nuclear reaction so once the control rods are out take your self-igniting fuel and place it in this slot and that will kick start the reaction for all the other non-self-igniting fuel as well and as you can see as the temperature reaches 400 degrees celsius the control rod will start going in in order to control the temperature now as you can see the temperature is rising quickly but now it has slowed down and now it has slowed down even further so this is the doing of automatic control rods the control rods will never let the temperature reach above 900 degrees celsius in this case and it looks like a temperature is stabilizing and 893 that is what i'm guessing the temperature will be stabilized at there so our temperature is constant at 893 degrees celsius and the control rods are 77 percent out so now let's take a look on the temperature of the other fuel rods 813 degrees celsius 809 degrees celsius so nearly all of the fuel rods are at the same temperature so this is where the automatic control rods really shine they will never let your reactor explode and as you can see we are producing a lot of power from this reactor so that was all i had for this video guys i hope you guys liked it if you did 
don't forget to smash that like button and also subscribe to my channel if you want to see more content like this in the future peace out guys stay safe